Now, I meant to get this review out before Christmas, but time and laziness just weren't on my side. But to my credit, this movie takes place in July and is only related to this time of year due to cold slash snow. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Anyway, here's my review. Okay, thanks. So I don't like Frozen all that much. But wait, before you decide to smash that dislike button, like Hercules bringing down his mighty hammer to deliver the final fatal blow on Medusa and her army of tentacle soldiers, have a listen. My rating of Frozen stands at about a high 6, so I don't find it to be a bad movie. However, what I want to address in this review is a handful of problems I had with the movie, as well as the insane amount of hype it's been getting. And, as always, be sure you've seen the movie beforehand, otherwise you're going to get the whole thing spoiled here. Let's begin. I'll start with the characters. Frozen centers around two sisters, Elsa and Anna, princesses of the Kingdom Arendelle. The main focus of the movie is on Elsa's inexplicable power to control cold elements like snow and ice. The movie starts with an attempt to showcase the lives of these two sisters and how they use Elsa's powers to play games. As I assume you know the story, Elsa accidentally hits Anna with a bolt of frost and this brings the fun to a sudden stop. Their parents barge in and the dad says, I know where we have to go. So they take off into the mountains and they end up in a clearing populated by rock trolls. Also note that child Kristoff has followed them here and the woman troll just decides to keep him and his reindeer. Alright. The chief troll wipes Anna's memory of Elsa's power and replaces them with other fun memories. I'm not quite sure what this accomplishes, but apparently it heals Anna, so whatever. Here's my first gripe with the movie. The scene with the girls playing in the snow is the one time we get to see them be themselves as children. The sequence lasts literally two minutes, and is supposed to serve as not only the introduction to these characters, but also develop them enough for us to know and care about them. 120 seconds is an extremely tight time span to introduce your leads, and I don't feel like Frozen pulled it off very well. Now you might be saying, Hey, come on, it's already an hour 40. It's not like they could have made it any longer. It's a kid's movie, for crying out loud. True, it's already a little long for a children's movie, but look at Toy Story. It's 21 minutes shorter than Frozen, and it has perfect plot timing. The birthday party scene introduces all of the characters in a timely fashion. The plot gets moving right away with the trip to Pizza Planet, and then subsequently being taken home by Sid. Then you get the bombastic finale, all the character story arcs are wrapped up with a neat little bow, and it's all done in an hour and 20 minutes. You may say it's not fair to compare Frozen to something as great as Toy Story. Well, according to the reception, I'd say yes. I'd say it is. So the girls grow up, and it seems that Anna never gets to leave the castle until the gates open for her sister's coronation. She sings of finally being able to find romance because she'll actually be able to be in contact with other people. I don't see the point in keeping Anna locked in as well, because it's not like she knew of her sister's power anymore. Anywho, Anna meets Hans and falls in love with him faster than a Disney princess. Wait. I do, however, like the way the movie plays up the Disney romance cliches like True Love's Kiss and the ridiculous speed at which the main characters fall for each other. Frozen seems to go in that direction, but then subverts your expectations, which I've got to give it credit for. Anna announcing her sudden engagement with Hans causes Elsa's powers to spiral out of control, which subsequently causes her to flee into the mountains. Now comes the moment that people have actually, collectively, spent nearly 1,000 years watching on YouTube alone. The infamous Let It Go sequence. I'm sure you've heard this song to death, so I will spare you the obvious points. Let it go. Go, not holding back anymore with or without you with or without you and she will be loved and she will be loved with or without you with or without you the snow never bothered me anyway I'm not a fan of this song. Not only is it comprised of the one, five, six, four chord progression that's plagued the music industry since contemporary music has been a thing, 
but it's placed in a point in the movie where I feel it makes it more or less hypocritical. The song is about not being ashamed of who you are and to embrace yourself without fear, which is a phenomenal message, especially for kids. However, what follows this scene sort of nullifies the song's intent. After Elsa lets it all go, she just isolates herself in the mountains again, leaving her kingdom below without anyone to rule it still. It's like saying, it's okay to have autism. Just go have autism in the woods, where no one will come across you. Not exactly the breakout strategy that the song preached. Anyway, let's let Let It Go go. We cut to Anna, who is ascending the mountain in search for Elsa, and she comes across Wandering Oaken's trading post and sauna. This is also the scene where Kristoff comes back into play and joins Anna for the rest of her trek up the mountains. I'll be honest here, Oaken is probably my favorite character in the entire movie. He's a side character that's in the movie for just under three minutes, but at least he's a joy to watch. Unlike the next upcoming character. Hi everyone, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Freaking Olaf. This character has only a handful of lines that I found funny, and the rest of his screen time is just obnoxious. I felt that a lot of his comedy was delivered in a very modern style. He phrases his sentences in a way that no one from, say, 30 plus years ago would have. This is a trend I've noticed in some recent kids' movies, and it can sometimes work, but here I felt that a lot of what he pulled just fell flat. He goes into a musical number that explains how he dreams of being somewhere warm slash tropical. As soon as this sequence started, I knew that he'd be presented with a situation at the end of the movie where he started melting, but Elsa would cast some spell on him to keep him cold wherever he went. Check and check. This isn't really a criticism, but this didn't really break the mold much in my opinion. Anna and Kristoff ascend the mountains to Elsa's stronghold. Anna confronts Elsa, and we even get vocal proof that she hasn't really let all of it go. Leave me be. Yes, I'm alone, but I'm alone and free. And as the musical number escalates, Elsa gets more and more anxious until she lets loose a frostbolt straight into Anna's heart. Elsa gets even more frustrated and summons a huge snow monster to throw her sister and her friends out. Kristoff takes Anna to his troll family because apparently they're love experts. After a musical bit that just seems to ship Kristoff and Anna, in case that wasn't obvious enough, the Dr. Guru rock troll thing says that only an act of true love can thaw Anna's frozen heart. Kristoff takes Anna back to town while Hans is busy storming Elsa's stronghold. Elsa uses her ice powers to defend herself during the sequence, and I actually thought this was an interesting segment. It made me think that if the Let It Go sequence hadn't been shoehorned into the movie earlier, it would have made Elsa's time on the mountain a lot darker and a lot more mysterious. Now yes, I know this is mainstream Disney, it's not trying to be dark or anything like that, but it's just a personal little nitpick that I felt could have made Elsa's character much more compelling. Anyway, Elsa ends up captured and taken back to Arendelle. Anna gets rushed back to kiss Hans, but... Oh, Anna. If only there was someone out there who loved you. Psyche. Hans reveals that he wants to marry into the monarchy because he's 13th in line to his throne. Sudden bad guy. She mentions how desperate Anna was for love that she was willing to marry him just like that. Again, a nice little wink at the sudden love of cliche Disney romances, I thought. Hans leaves and says that Anna died right after they said their marriage vows and that Elsa is to blame. Olaf shows up to help Anna, and Elsa breaks free from her prison, creating a snowstorm that causes Kristoff to rush back, fearing for Anna's safety. Everyone converges on the lake, and Anna freezes completely, inadvertently saving Elsa from Hans in the process. Elsa clutches frozen Anna in sadness, but then Anna begins to thaw. You sacrificed yourself for me? I love you. Now that Elsa knows that love thaws the frost, she just spreads love everywhere and the winter ends happily ever after. So all in all, Frozen certainly isn't bad, but I do feel it has a few flaws that keeps it a few rungs down the Disney ladder from the greats above it. The animation is nice, the story has some worthwhile elements to it, the music was decent, and it just feels like some intelligent people had their hands in the creative process. But at the end of the day, it just doesn't seem to match up to classic 
princess-based Disney works like Beauty and the Beast, Sleeping Beauty, even Cinderella. Certain people claim that this is classic Disney or a return to form for Disney, but when I hear those phrases, things like Paper Man jump into my mind in front of Frozen. While albeit it's a short film and the story feels more like a Pixar product than one of old school Disney, the hybrid 2D, 3D animation, hand-drawn stuff was beautiful. Personally, I'd love to see a full-length Disney feature with this kind of animation style behind it. In the end, my only major gripe with the movie is the insane amount of hype this movie has been getting. The movie was released on November 27th, 2013. It's December of 2014 now, and people are still going nuts over this movie. It's the fifth highest grossing movie of all time, at just above 1.2 billion. Let It Go has nearly 400 million views on YouTube, and Frozen merch was undoubtedly the go-to gift for young females this year. And they even re-released the movie back in November of this year as a sing-along edition which I can only assume is the subtitles permanently turned on during music sequences. People actually bought that? Now while this was meant to be a review that just simply critiqued the movie objectively by itself, it's impossible for me to ignore the impact and attention that this movie has had and has been getting this past year. Uh, my main feeling more than anything is just confusion. Um, but the psychology behind trends is a topic for another time, and to be honest, it's something that baffles me. So, that's that. I'll leave my review here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, leave a comment below suggesting other movies you might want me to review, and I will ignore all of them. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas, and have a happy new year. Peace.